Hello everyone and welcome back to another video, it is Francesco here. So today's video on the Keep Productive YouTube channel, we're bringing on Al Chen who's going to talk us through how to build a goal tracking application inside of Coda. Now I'm very excited because Al is someone I've known for quite a while, Al creates Skillshare videos on Excel and now he works for Coda and I actually didn't realize I knew him until a few months ago uh, where I sort of connected the dots because I, I watched some of his uh, Skillshare videos, actually my wife watched some of his Skillshare videos too, and then I made the connection that those two were the same people. But it's great to have Al on and uh, I'm really excited for him to dive into goal tracking. Please do remember in this video you can get the template for this below in the description, so if you just want to take this goal tracking template, then you can. And the brilliant thing is, if you want to build it yourself, Al is gonna do this from scratch. So in today's video, we're passing over to Al from Coda. Thank you very much, guys. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Cheers. Hi, everyone. My name is Al Chen from Coda, and I want to thank Francesco for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about how to build apps in Coda today. So some quick background about myself. I have actually been, uh, I'm a heavy Excel user, Microsoft Excel, and I've been blogging about Excel since 2012, I believe. And here's my blog about Excel, which I kind of maintain separately from Coda. So check that out if you're interested. I also answer quite a few questions on Quora, also relating to Microsoft Excel and databases and Coda. Uh, and finally, I teach a few classes, as you can imagine, about Excel on Skillshare. I have three classes, and I also have a few classes about Coda as well. And Francesco also is quite the Skillshare teacher. I actually met or found out about Francesco through Skillshare and definitely check out his channel for additional classes about Notion and Things3 and other to-do apps. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about building an application in Coda. Uh, you may have seen Francesco do a few videos about Coda already. And my one of my jobs actually at Coda is to help our users build completely new applications in Coda. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build a very basic, but can be complicated sometimes, uh, goal and task tracker. And we're going to start off very simple and then move on up to uh, building this whole application and eventually you'll see how it can work for you for task tracking. And again, my background is spreadsheets. So I, I, I tend to think about things in spreadsheets, structured data, structured data, tables, lists, so on and so forth. And I generally don't think about things in terms of general note taking like you might see with other typical apps. Um, the reason why is because eventually, if you take all these notes, you'll have to store these notes somewhere in some kind of table or structured form. So that's why I tend to stay in Excel or, or Coda because I like to think about data being in tables a lot of times. I actually got a lot of inspiration for this doc or this application we're going to build today from watching Rebecca Ford's uh, Tables Together in Notion video. She talks a lot about how you can use tables in Notion. And I like to also, I thought some of their concepts were very similar to how you can build tables in Coda. And she also mentioned, I think, Crafty Base as well in her video. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Before we actually build the actual master task tracker, I'm going to create a section here called Months. And I'm going to build a, create a really simple table uh, called months and let's go here. Let's create a months table. And this is going to be for when we want to actually, uh, put in all the months for our given goals and tasks. So I'm going to call this full month and we're going to start writing. This is actually going to be a date format. So I'm going to change this to a date format and let's start with November, 2018. So let's go to number one. And I don't like this format. So I'm going to change this actually to be the full month. Um, and then the full year layout like that. And to save us some time, I'm just going to copy and paste all the months I care about from a separate uh, doc, so we don't have to you don't have to watch me do all this. So now we have everything from November through December. I'll zoom in a little bit just so you can see everything here. <clears throat> Great. So let's actually start talking about our goals. Oh, actually, let's first name our doc to something more interesting. Let's call this our goal tracking app with Francesco. 
Let's actually add a little fun emoji here. All right. <clears throat> so we have our months. Now let's actually tack on our goal types. So our goal types can range can be anything you want, but I have specific goal types I use for my goals. And I'm going to call this column type name. Again, we're building another table for our goal types. This will be the detailed about that goal type. And the reason we have this table is because we want to be able to classify all our goals with a specific type, right? So we might start with things like health, might be a type, writing, teaching. Uh, what else do we have here? I have reading and family. <clears throat> I'm just going to copy and paste some type details. So if you want to get some more detail about these specific types, I can copy, I'm going to put in things like I want to increase my squat to three plates or I want to write and publish one blog post per week. So these are just details about these specific goal types that I want to accomplish. All right. So now we have our kind of helper sections. These are helper tables. I'm going to create our master goal tracker now. Let's call this master goal tracker. Let's add like a nice fun emoji for this. Let's Give it like a nice heart eyes. <laughs> and let's move this to the very top of our, our, our application in Coda. So let's figure out what kind of things we want to add to our table of our all our goals. So again, let's call this master goal tracker. <clears throat> and let's call this column goal detail. Again, everything I'm doing right now is just in tables, but you can also add add text to the canvas here. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But for now, when I generally build applications in code, I always start with building tables first because, again, I think in structured data, lists, tables, linking things together. So that's just kind of how why Coda is really power powerful for when you're linking to get data together. So the goal detail, let's say I want to try new workout class, do 20 push-ups write a blog post today. You notice how these are very individual. Let's actually collapse this for a little bit so we can focus on the real main real estate. These are specific goals that I want to accomplish um, at a certain time, not, not sure when. But how do I actually put together, link the, uh, the goal types from here into this master tracker? Because I want to assign this goal to a specific goal type. So I'm going to call this column goal type for now. And look what happens with this specific column format. If I change this column format to look up from table, I can actually select one of the tables that I've created already. And I've only created three tables, just master goal tracker, months, and goal types. I want to click on goal types because I want to bring in the data from goal types. So if I click on goal types, you notice now that the selection list contains the five goal types that we have from this table right here. So if I click on writing or health or highlight health, it, show, it shows the type name as well as the detail. If I click on or highlight teaching, it will show teaching and type of detail. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's just copy and I'm just going to call this one health. This one is health. This one is writing. And I'm just going to copy and paste a few more goals from my other doc here so we don't have to, you don't have to waste time watching me write. So let's put these in here. So these are all selected. And let's think about a timeline of when I want to accomplish these goals. And we're going to create a different type of column format this time in this, this column. It's going to be a select list. Where is it right here? And we're going to call the selectable options will be today. So these are goals I want to get done today. And then let's have another option as future. And let's say all these are today, maybe teach another Skillshare classes for the future, Reacting 84 is today, today. And now we kind of have like the very basics of a master goal tracker. Now I'm going to add a few more columns to make this a little more interesting. And we'll I'll show you what those are right now. So let's add a start date column. We're going to change this to be a date column. And this is what I want to actually start working on this uh, this goal. I'm going to copy these these dates again from another table so you don't have to watch me select. Actually, this for some reason change this to a select list. Let's go maybe get back. And here we go. So these are all specific dates now. And let's also do another 
cool format called duration. How long do I expect this? How long do I estimate um, this goal to take? It could be 16 days. It could be 14 days. Who knows? But um, this gives you a way to actually mark off how many days this task will take or this goal will take in this case. And let's actually make this a little bigger so we can squash all our data in one column. And let's also put an end date. So this is kind of like saying, okay, this is when I, I want to finish my goal by. Let's make this also a date. And I'm gonna, again, copy uh, data again from another table here. So you don't have to watch me type in a bunch of dates. And this is probably gonna change this to a date format already. That's great. Let's collapse this a little bit. All right, just a few more things and then we're gonna be good to go. So let's add in a month when I want to complete the date, complete the goal. Let's call this month. And again, I can choose the lookup column format and select the months table that I created over here. And now all these options will become available for me to select in this dropdown. So I'm going to select November here, and let's make these all December. I'm just gonna copy these, all these down. And I wanna change, let's see here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this a little different. I don't want to have this format. I'm gonna change this to be a regular text format. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Because I want this to read out um, the month and the year. So what I'm gonna do is actually write a formula that adds in the month from here and also the year from here into this column. So I'm gonna write equals uh, month name of start date. So that's great. And then I'm going to do a plus a space and then plus year and then do start date again. So now the formula is basically saying take the month name of the start date, which is gonna be November in this case, plus a space, then also add in the year from the start date, hit enter. And now I have like the nice full word plus the full year format. And then finally, let's add in a scale column. This gives me a nice visual way of saying like, um, how far am I getting along with, uh, let's actually call this progress. How far am I getting along with finishing this uh, this goal? I'm gonna make this like a nice little thumbs up. Let's say I wanna do this, maybe like this one's four. And this is like kind of a nice fun way of showing the progress of a goal instead of having to write like done or in progress, stuff like that. Okay, so this is all good, but what if I want to add a bunch of new goals to my, um, to my, uh, master goal tracker, I'm gonna to have to, you, I'm gonna use a template and this is the template I'm gonna use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a bunch of goals based on these goal types. So up here, I'm going to write something like, let's say I want to add goals for, and I'm gonna make this all a bunch of, um, of dates. So I want to be able to tell Coda, I want to add like five new goals for a given date. And I want that date to be something I define. And again, everything Coda is very customizable, so which is why I'm gonna show you how to use a control, which and then also a uh, select control. So we're gonna call this select month, and we're gonna make these selectable options equal to, let's see here, the months. So now, if you remember, the months table comes from this guy right here, all these months. So if I made these, the selectable options here months, this means everything in this uh, select dropdown is something I can choose from that months table. So I'm gonna select November for now. Uh, actually, let's make this uh, generate 2019, just to make this example more clear. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see. Maybe add a nice, nice little emoji here. Uh, let's do this rock sign one. All right. And then for what's the timeline? Let's call this, we're going to make another drop down. Let's make this a control select list. And let's call this one, um, let's see, select timeline. And the select selectable options are today or the future. 
And again, this is matching up with what's in this timeline here. So let's say I want to do these are for, I want to set make goals for the future. And here's like the big final step we have to take in order to add um, all a bunch of rows at the same time for a given, uh, a given template. So I'm going to do something here called a button. And this button, we're going to call this add goals. So this is going to be the most complicated formula you're going to see. But the reason why it's a little complicated is because, again, we want to give, I want, in Coda, you want to, we want to give you the ability to make things as customizable as possible. So that's why this formula is going to look a little bit crazy. But um, what it's essentially going to do is take all my goal types, add a bunch of rows, and then uh, set the date to this and set the, the timeline to that. And you'll, I'll show you what this looks like right here. So I'm going to write a formula for this button that is, I don't know what this is right here, equals, okay, actually let's um, get rid of this for now. All right, here we go. So if I write equals formula map, and we're, what we wanna do is go through all our goal types right here and I want to, for every single goal type, I want to add a row to my master goal tracker. So I'm going to write master goal tracker here. And what I want to do is I want to set each goal type in my master tracker table to equal uh, the, um, let's see here, type name. And what's up, what this is saying is I'm setting the goal type here equal to the type name from the goal types table. Again, this is all very customizable, so you can do whatever you want here. This is just one example of how to do this. I want the timeline, which is this column, to equal the, the timeline, the select timeline control, which is set here. And then finally, I want the start date to be equal to the select month which is this guy right here. So you can see how all these highlights, everything is kind of linked together now. And actually I think I wanna do this to text so I can make this like actually show up as text. Uh, and I think we're missing a, here we go. All right, and I'm gonna make this green button. Let's give this a nice smiley face. And here we go. Let's, let's click on this button and see what happens. So you'll notice that it automatically added a bunch of rows and it added them based on the five different goal types that I outlined right here. Health, writing, teaching, reading daily. It also set the timeline to be today, which is what I set up here. The start date is set to January 1st, 2019, which is what I wanted. And this is all ready for me to play around with. Now, in terms of estimated time, um, this is something that you can set for yourself if you want. Um, I will set a default, of, let's say, of seven days, right? And then, actually, let's see what happens. End date, actually, we should change the end date column to be a formula as well, because what we're going to do is we're going to set this, the end date to be start date plus the estimated time. So now this is all formulaic, just like you might have in Excel or Google Sheets. So start date plus estimated time equals the end date column. So let's actually delete all these rows again, and let's try it for a different type of uh, goal type. Let's say let's say we want to do it for February 2019. These are going to be future goals since these are this is kind of way on the future. Now if I hit add goals. Now this whole table fills out automatically with the goal types set to future for February. You notice how the default value for estimated time is seven days and the end date automatically goes out to the number of days that you estimate here. And the month is still February. Um, and now you can go in here and start adding in new goals like uh, you know eat healthier, so on and so forth. And you can go on and be on your way. So let's delete these rows for now. This is, so this, I got this uh, concept actually from watching um, Francesco's video about creating bullet journals where you have a table of data that you want to replicate a few times. And you can do that by putting it into this table right here by using a button. 
and it automatically adds that template, if you will, of rows from that other table into your master goal tracker. Okay, so we are almost done. A uh, few last things we're gonna do before I show you some of the views that you can build off of this master goal tracker is the ability to link in uh, this thing, link in other applications such as uh, Google Calendar or Gmail. So we have this, uh, this uh, feature called packs and I'm going to add a pack for, let's see here, Google Calendar. I'm going to sign to install. I'm going to use my this email address. Okay, all set. All right. So now I can actually use my doc with Google Calendar. I'm going to add another column. I'm going to call this uh, Google Calendar. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to create a button rather. Create a button. And this button is going to be Calendar. So this will allow me to add a specific goal to Google Calendar. So if I just, uh, let's see here, I'm going to call this add to my Cal. And I'm going to actually change this to Google Calendar, create event. And now I can actually specify uh, the calendar event I'm gonna create on my Google Calendar, use my Google Calendar. And so let's say the summary is gonna be goal detail, which is the first column of my table, which is right here. And then the start date is going to be just start date. End date is going to be end date. We have all that ready. And that should be it. Let's actually give this a try and see if it actually ends up adding, I should have this uh, make, make this a little, like, nice little color here. Uh, let's make this green. Let's give it a nice tick box, tick mark. All right, so let's say I want to add uh, read 1984 by next week to December 1st. It's going to take 21 days to complete, ends on December 22nd. If I add this to my Cal, one external action performed. If I go to my Google Calendar now, this is for November. Let's go to December. Oh, it looks like it's not showing up just yet. Maybe if I refresh my calendar. There we go. You notice how it shows up right here. We're going to by this. So this is a really great way to connect rows in Coda or any kind of data in Coda into your other third-party applications like Google Calendar, um, like Gmail, Greenhouse, Instagram, Intercom, Spotify, so on and so forth. And we're releasing a lot of these packs every day as we speak. And the, uh, the la so now we have our, our master goal tracker. This data set is kind of complete, if you will. Now we can build really cool views based off of this master table. So let's say I want to have a separate view of view my goals goals by month. Now this could be in the same section, it could be a different section. I'm just gonna do it in the same section for now just to show you guys how everything is connected. I'm going to do a the plus sign here, table, insert a view of my master goal tracker. And this is just a view, I'm gonna hide this table, this column title for now. And here is the same exact table as my table, master goal tracker. But if I pivot or group rather along the month name, now I can kind of see all my goals by, uh, by month rather than by goal detail. It gives me a more timeline view of how my, all my goals are for a given um, month. I can also decide to hide things. Let's say I want to hide the end date. I'll actually get this here. Hide this, I wanna hide this, for instance. It just makes it a lot cleaner to look at. And let's say I wanna hide this as well. And the great thing about these views is that if I change, let's say, training workout class, hooray, this changes it in my master table as well. So that's really, that's show you how everything is linked together. So this is just one way of looking at your data. Another way is to look at it as a, let's say, a Gantt chart or a timeline view. So I'm gonna do a chart, a Gantt chart. I'm gonna do a Gantt chart of my master goal tracker. And now you can kind of see 
all your uh, goals broken out by a given Gantt uh, chart. And you can move these tables or these rows around. You notice as I'm moving these around, it changes up here as well. So this is just the same data, but it just happens to be viewed uh, as a Gantt chart versus a, a, uh, a table data. So it's the same table of data. If you go look over here, if you go back to a table, it's still the same table of data. It just happens to be laid out as a chart. Okay, so this is kind of the main gist of building a goal task tracker in Coda. Uh, the part about adding the, using this button to create a template of new goals is something, again, I was inspired by watching the bullet journal video that Francesco made. And the last thing I'm going to show you, the big kind of a uh, feature that we recently announced uh, yesterday, I believe, if the video comes out, if this video comes out today, then I believe the feature just got announced yesterday, which is this notion of um, automations. So an automation is something that kind of allows you to, well, automate a task that's repetitive or uh, you just don't want to have to constantly copy and paste data. So an automation is kind of like a macro in Excel, but not exactly. Um, but I'll show you exactly what that looks like in, in this automations uh, feature. So automations is a really powerful way to uh, send yourself an email, hide yourself, at, update a row, or anything that you want to do in Coda can be automated using this this panel. And it all it depends on is uh, adding rules here. So triggers are basically things that kick off an automation. So a trigger could be time based, where every Monday or every Thursday send yourself an email with all your goals or send yourself an email with just goals that are due today, I'm gonna to do one that's called row change. And what this is, is that I'm going to send myself an email only if the timeline for a goal gets changed to the future. Um, and let's actually add some conditional formatting here just so you can see what, um, uh, so now so all the rows future with the future highlighted becomes will, a little more prominent. The future selector will be highlighted green. So I'm gonna do an automation where anytime a uh, goal gets set to a future timeline, I want to send myself an email. So let's go here, let's say uh, master goal tracker, anytime the timeline. Uh, so we're gonna look at just the timeline column in this automation. So we're gonna see basically if the result from step one, which is this one right here, um, dot timeline equals future. So if you change something from future to today, then it won't send me an email. And then what I wanna do is I want to, uh, actually before I do this, I'll have to set up my Gmail pack. Let's do this really quick. It should take just a few, sec uh, a few seconds. Where is the Gmail pack? Here it is. Sign to install, use this email, okay. There we go, it's all set up. Let's make sure it's set up, okay. Let's go back to automation. So now in my rule, I, if I, so when this condition is true, uh, let's look at this drop down here, then I want to send myself an email, send email, and I'm going to use my account. Um, let's see here, let's make the, uh, send this to myself for now, doc.io. Subject will be goal set for future. And the content will just be this row. So what that means is anytime a given row is changed to future, it's gonna send me an email with just the, the data for that row. So let's try to, let's actually test this feature out for a little bit. So I actually have to turn this on, turn this baby on, turn this on. Okay, let's, uh, hopefully this demo works. <laughs> Always like doing live demos, right? So let's say that I change this trend your workout class, hooray, to future. It gets highlighted green, and I should be getting an email with that goal at some point. And here it is. Actually, let's make this collapsed. And you notice how it just links to that first row, uh, this, this column. Um, and if I click on that, it just goes back 
oh, for some reason didn't go to the actual row, but it just shows you this guy right here. Let's try a different one right here really quick. Let's say I change call sister next week, change this to future. And again, what's happening is this automation, it is saying that any time that I change a row timeline to future, it will send me a email. So let's actually look at this again, master goal tracker timeline. If the result from this is future, then it will send me an email. And there it is, goal set for future, call sister next week. So that is how you can build a basic to somewhat intermediate goal tracker in Coda. And it's, uh, oh wow, I actually forgot that, also that the conditional formatting here carries over to your Gantt charts. There's a whole bunch of other features, but I just wanted to show the very basics of how to create a goal tracker uh, in Coda and how you can use things like packs to add to integrate with other third-party applications and also how you can set up automations so that uh, very common repetitive tasks can be automated and you can send yourself emails you can update rows all that kind of good stuff so thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed this tutorial slash uh, build out of an application in coda and hopefully we'll i'll do more of these with uh, francesco thanks